Hi, this is Mike with Actifio. This is part two of our three-part series on how Actifio addresses the copy data problem. In part one, we talked a little bit about what is the copy data problem, why do we have all of these different silos of products and processes creating all of these copies, and how Actifio consolidates that into a single golden copy that's efficiently maintained and is available for immediate use. In this video, we're going to talk about how Actifio manages the storage, where it puts the data, how long it keeps it there, and why it matters to you. So to start out with, when we look at the economics of all the different copies, one thing that jumps out to us right away is that there's a big difference between backups and snapshots. Snapshots tend to consume more space from a Delta's standpoint because they're production storage, production format. There's no compression or deduplication. Uh, on the other hand, Backups, while they have a full copy, they often use deduplication for longer term retentions than you can realistically get with snapshots. So when we implemented our solution, we said we're going to need two different pools of storage to work with. One of them is going to be a snapshot pool. And this pool is where we're going to store data that needs to be immediately accessible with high performance for any use case that you might need, from disaster recovery to simple restores to test and development reasons. On the other hand, we're also going to provide a deduplicated pool. And that deduplicated pool is there so that you can have a longer retention with the economics of backup. Now, when we have the two pools, we have to keep it simple for the user to maintain and manage what's going to be where and when. And to do that, we've created an SLA engine. And that SLA engine is a policy-driven engine where you, the user, define things like RPO and RTO and retention. So how often do you want to capture the data from the source? How long do you need to keep it? Where should it be stored so that you can meet your RTO requirements? And all you need to do when you define an SLA is then apply it to a policy, and Actifio will enforce that SLA for you. Data typically flows in and will come into the snapshot pool first, and you'll have a full image in that snapshot pool available for whatever you need. We'll then, if you've defined a policy, make another copy of that data, copying it from the snapshot pool into the dedupe pool so that you can have your longer term retention. It'll exist in both places with different retention periods. After the initial ingest, all data movement is block level deltas. Very efficient to minimize job durations, to minimize um, consumption, of course. Now, in addition to having a snapshot and a dedupe pool, Actifio has a third type of pool. And unlike the other two, which are associated with a particular instance of Actifio, the third one is called OnVault. An OnVault pool is a pool of storage in a separate external storage location. Typically, this is object storage, and it can be in the cloud, something like Amazon S3 or Google Nearline or Azure Blob, for example. It also can be an on-premise object store, like IBM Cloud Object Storage uh, or Scality or any of the other products that exist out there. And just like the SLA engine puts data from Snapshot into Dedupe, it also can put data from Snapshot into OnVault. We also have the ability for some data to go directly to Dedupe or directly to OnVault all depending on what you've defined in your SLA engine. Now, once data exists in any of these three locations, it's always immediately available. So that if you need to recover, whether it's from last night's backup here or two months ago's backup that's out here in the OnVault pool, you can immediately say to Actifio, make this data available to my application. And even in the event of a difficult data set like a large database, for example, I've got a five terabyte database sitting out here in my OnVault pool in Amazon S3. Over the internet, I can present that data directly to a database server, bring it online, and start running queries. Now, the performance of this connection is going to be appropriate for an internet connection in this example. It's not something you're going to run your business, your enterprise off of. But for a quick recovery from a large database to avoid that entire restore window, it's tremendously powerful, very impactful. Now, in addition to the data being efficiently moved into the dedupe pool and into the OnVault pool, data is also efficiently moved the other way. So when you do one of those instant mounts from the OnVault pool or from dedupe, what happens in the background is the data 
optionally at your choice can be migrated back into this snapshot pool so that the performance will be linearly increasing as more and more of that data is moved into the snapshot pool. We even have the ability to move that data back from our storage, our assigned snapshot pool, or on Vault or Ddupe, into your storage as a background process. Sometimes we lever leverage other technologies like storage vMotion or uh, Oracle ASM rebalance. Other times we have our own that we do for things like SQL Server, for example, to move the data in the background while these databases and servers and VMs are, are online and running. Now, if that was the end of the story, you'd be in great shape for local recoveries, for local test and development, for almost anything you can think of locally. But to get the data fulfilled, the requirements fulfilled for your disaster recovery business continuity, to get that data off-site, we have to introduce one more thing. And in this case, if we consider this to be a, a separation between local and remote, now we have an Actifio implementation in another location. Now this could be in the cloud. This could be in your own data center. It doesn't matter where. It has multiple pools associated with it, just like we do on-site, Snapshot and Dedu. And Actifio will give you the option of replicating Snapshot to Snapshot so that you can have your data available for instant high-speed access in a remote location for something like disaster recovery. You can replicate Dedupe to Dedupe. And that replication is there so that you can have your long-term retention off-site and still have the economics of backup. We even have the ability of saying, replicate the data from snapshot to dedupe and then remote dedupe and then back into the snapshot pool that way. So that you get a mixture of both worlds where you have your data off-site with low RTO because you have it in your snapshot pool, low bandwidth requirements because it's deduped and compressed for replication, but you have your RPO that took a little bit longer because you can't do it quite as frequently due to the number of hops involved. So disaster recovery requirements vary from customer to customer. They even require from app, uh, vary from application to application. We allow you to choose with your SLA which applications, you, which requirements, and then fulfill them. Possibly most importantly, all of this management is done at the application layer. I'm not performing, I'm not talking about performing pool-based replication. It's not that everything in this snapshot pool goes here or everything in this dedupe pool goes here. It's app by app. They can have different retentions, different frequencies, whatever you like. And then the Envault pool sitting in the middle, the Envault pool is actually accessible from any Actifio implementation that can reach it, which means you can even eliminate replication altogether by simply having an on-site copy and an Envault copy, which maybe is in an on-site object store, maybe is in the cloud, maybe is in a remote location, but have that one copy in a highly available object store and use it for your recoveries in another location. We do, of course, support the ability to have multiple on-vault pools and send the data to multiples if you do have them in different locations as well. Um, so almost any way that you need to configure this, you can configure this. In our next video, we'll talk about how Actifio integrates between the Actifio solution and the source data. How do we talk to VMware? How do we talk to Oracle, to SQL Server, to different hosts, to NAS, etc.? Please tune in for that one. Thank you.